Hello everyone, it's Sarah from Crafty Creatures, here with your Puss Has New Boots painting today. We're going to need our canvas and pencil, our paints of course, as well as our little paints. We're going to need our paint brushes, something to wash our brushes in, and something to mix colors on. I'm using a paper plate here. Now first things first, we want our canvas to be portrait that's wider than it is tall. And we're going to start by making an egg. We want this egg to be fairly big with a little tail on it. I almost want to picture this egg to be about half the size of the canvas but kind of sitting up a bit. So I like to say it's kind of in between the first and third quarters. And then we're going to very lightly add a little circle to the top, kind of flattened, with some pointy ears. This is to make our cat we want to draw nice and light, that way we can erase things, and it also means our pencil lines aren't going to show up too, too strong. And then we're going to add some boots to our feet. We're going to have those back legs kind of sticking up, sticking away from the body a bit. That way we can see them really well, creates this nice silhouette. And it really helps push this idea that, oh, this little cat is so happy because they found some very cool boots that fit their little feet. I'm making mine very fancy so they have a nice little cuff, they have some little heels. And of course we're going to add a pair of front arms with little paws. We're going to kind of have them reaching towards the boots, but not really touching them. We're going to give our cat a fancy, fancy hat. We're going to make it have some holes in it though, that way so their ears can stick out. I'm giving my hat a little bit of a brim, think almost like a pirate hat, and I'm going to give it a feather. These are just some little extra details. If you want to add them, you can. If you don't, you don't have to. And of course, let's make some little triangles for the inner ears, and let's make some big, big circles for the eyes with the pupils. That's the inside part. And a little mouth. I give it kind of a curvy W on the top, makes it look very cat-like. Now we're going to add a little rope or belt. This is what our little sword is going to sit on. I'm just darkening up my pencil lines here for my tail. And we're going to make a little sword. Again, you can make this sword how look however you want. I'm just going with a very classic medieval sword. If you want one of those rapiers, which are those fancy skinny swords with the points, you can. You can give it a fancy handle. Just making my sword fairly plain and fairly short, because this is for a cat, so it would be a pretty small sword. You can make a little line for the ground. And you want your pencil lines just dark enough that you'll be able to see them. You don't want to lose them as you're painting, but you don't want them too dark, because that can actually mess with your colors a bit. Now I'm giving my cat a cape. This is also kind of an extra detail. I would recommend adding it because it just helps make the cat look really, really cute. And it gives you something to more to paint that's really fun, gets you to do a little bit of shading, and it's another chance to use some fun colors. All right, now we're done with our drawing, so it's time to paint. So we're going to start with blue paint and we are going to fill in all the sky background around our cat with our blue paint. Now if I'm just using straight blue, if you want to change the shade a little bit, you know, you can add white to make a lighter blue. You know, you can add a little bit of red to make a darker blue. It's kind of up to you in terms of what kind of blue you want to use for your background. But I'm just using just, just plain blue.
So next, I'm going to start painting in some of my details. I'm going to start with my hat. There isn't really an order you have to paint this in. Basically, you just kind of want to work section by section. So I'm starting with, you know, the brim of the hat. And maybe doing a little bit of work on the boots, and then I'm probably going to move on to the cat. And you can use whatever colors you wish for this painting. I just kind of give you guys some suggestions. So I'm using straight brown for the brim of my hat, the details of the belt. I'm also going to use it for the cuffs of the boots. Though I might make a darker brown for the cuffs of the boots, just to make them a little look different. So I'll just add a bit of black to some brown. And then I'm going to fill those cuffs and the heels of my boots in. If you want to make your boots bright purple and pink, you can go right ahead. can also add things like patterns to your boots and your hat but if you want to add patterns you want to paint them in first with their base coat and then let it dry a little bit and then go in and do details like spots or stripes or color changes. I'm painting in my hat and the rest of my boots black just because I want this to look very medieval. Now notice how as I'm painting, I'm kind of painting from the left side over to the right. This is because I'm right-handed and then it means I'm laying my hand on less wet paint, which is especially important when I'm using colors like black, which are very dark. They're very hard to cover up. You can also paint in the pupils of your cat's eyes. So that's the black part. Now we want them to be kind of almost pointed inwards so that they're kind of closer together, closer to the inside corner. That's going to help us to show that our cat is looking at these boots, which are nice and close. Just kind of gives our eyes a little bit of direction. And now I'm just painting in my boots here. Now I'm trying to smooth my paint out so I don't have any really big globs. Those take a lot longer to dry and they can actually make your painting look a little bit patchy depending on the color. If you're using a light color, you definitely want to avoid big globs because those spots will look darker while the other spots will look lighter. So I'm painting in the hilt, that's the handle of my sword. And I'm just painting them in with my black because I'm trying to keep my colors a little bit simple. And you can turn your canvas around. Don't feel like your canvas is stuck to the table. If you want to turn it around to be able to paint one spot and paint another spot, it really helps out. It helps lessen your chances of smudging your painting or putting your hand on it. It also makes it a little bit easier if you're doing, you know, really fine details. So next I'm going to make some pink. So I'm going to take a bit of red to a lot of white and I'm going to make a pink. I have a little bit more red in mind, so it's a darker pink. Red is a very strong color for mixing, so kind of mix a little bit at a time until you have a color you're happy with. I like using a darker pink for details like inner ears and mouths and noses. So next I'm going to start painting in my cat. So decide which color you want your cat to be. I'm going to make my cat kind of a gray tabby. You can do, you know, a brown tabby, you can do a calico, which is those pretty cats that are white, orange, and black. Just start with whatever color is your base coat. So in this case, mine is going to be a lighter gray, and then I'll go over top with some details in darker colors. You start with one color first, it makes it a lot easier. You can use your big brush where you can, and try to use your little brush where your big brush won't fit. Helps make it look a little bit cleaner. Now to do some shading, you can mix a darker color. In this case, I've added a little bit more black and a little bit of blue. And I'm just adding a little bit of shading here and there. You're just making a line under the leg and under the arm, a little bit along the tail, and kind of where those legs overlap. 
I'm also going to use it underneath the hat and along the back side of the cat. This is better done when your paint is a bit drier, so maybe work on a different section. I did this all kind of in one sitting, so my paint was still a bit wet underneath. Makes it a little bit harder to get those colors to sit nice and flat. But it also means you can blend them a bit easier, so depending on your look, mine is a bit more blended, so I've done it while my paint was still a bit more wet. Adding these little bits of shading just gives it a bit more life, and it kind of helps show, you know, this arm is overlapping this arm, and oh, the, you know, the cape casts a shadow because it's laying on top. Next, we're going to paint in our eye. So you can paint in your eye whichever color. I'm using a nice light green, so I mixed a little bit of green and blue with a lot of white. Cat's eyes generally are, you know, this light green, or they're a yellow. Sometimes they're blue. Again, you know, just like with painting or choosing your cat color, you know, think of what cats you've seen and what do they look like. That can help give you some really good inspiration. It can help you make some really beautiful kitties. Now, I went over some black by accident, so it kind of messed my color a little bit, so I had to kind of layer it. So just be careful when you're painting in your eyes that you, you don't go over the edge of those black. I'm just blending my shading in a little bit more. And I'm just going to add some details to my feathers. So I did a yellow feather, so I'm going to add the details in with orange. You don't necessarily want to go with black or mixing black with yellow or a darker color because then it can make it look very muddy. Going with a color that's very similar but a bit darker can really help. I'm also going to use a little bit of my gold paint that I had left from our Firebird painting on my sword just to make it look kind of fancy. Again, you know, choose which colors you'd like for your sword in your details. Now I've mixed a dark gray, so white with a bit more black. And I'm painting in my sword. I'm painting my sword in, in sections, that way it has a bit of shading, so I've painted in part of it with a darker gray, and then I'm going to make a lighter gray and fill in the other part. Just makes it look a bit more three-dimensional. Again, you can also just paint it in fully in one color, and then maybe add some detail lines on top. So I've added a darker line just along that one outside just because my color of my sword is a little bit close to my cat and I wanted to make a difference. Now that my cat has dried a little bit, I'm going to make some darker gray stripes because I want this to be a tabby. So along the tail, I'm making these short brush stroke rings. You can have a solid color cat or you can have it with a pattern. There's all different colors of cats out there. I'm also adding some little stripes to the face, into the cheeks, into the arms. For tabby stripes, you want to keep them almost zigzaggy so they're not really straight across. The fur kind of goes up and down a little bit. Just makes it look a little bit more natural. And I'm gonna add a little bit of a darker outline just to the ears. You can also look at pictures of cats if you're stuck for some inspiration. That can also really help. Next, I'm painting in my cape. I wanted to paint my cape in bright orange because my sky is a bit darker. That orange is going to really pop and it'll match my yellow feather, which has some orange details in. Again, you can paint your cape in whatever color you want. You can also make it multicolored. You can make it patterned. The choice is up to you. If you want to make it patterned, however, just make a base coat first, let it dry a little bit, and then go over top of it with some details. Now because I painted my cape orange, I'm actually going to do my shading with red. See how that makes it still look nice and bright, but we still get a bit darker. And then next we're going to fill in our ground. Again, you can change the shade of green. I'm just using flat green grass. And then I'm going to add in a nice black outline around my eye. This is best done with a small paintbrush and take your time. 
my video is a little bit sped up, so I'm actually work looks like I'm working a lot faster than I am. You know, always take your time if you're doing an outline on something. And then I'm just touching up a few spots here and there. Also gonna add a nice dark line to my sword. Again, I'm just adding some little details now here and there, just making it fancy. So our kind of last step is we're gonna add some highlights. So add a little bit of white highlights to your sword. I have them on short lines on an angle. And maybe give your boots a little shine too. Just makes them look really new and shiny. And I have these little lines coming off the sides just for kind of exclamation. Then you can use the wrong end of your paintbrush to make some eye shines. I'm making a few because I want these eyes to be really shiny. This cat is so excited for these new boots. And I'll give a few little spots here and there on the hat. It's because I want this hat to be very shiny and new. Same with my little, my little sparkly bits coming off my boots there. All right, and that's it, everybody. Thanks for painting with me today. I'm sure these cats look awesome. I will see you next time for a new painting. Bye-bye.